Well, hello everybody. Steffi here from The Makers and um, I'm live here today on um, the, um, goodness, what is it? The 7th of December, <laughs> um, continuing on our Animals in the Wood Advent Project wall hanging. And I've got, um, I've got it in front of me how far we got last time. So hopefully you're all catching up and um, if you haven't started yet, maybe you're ahead. Um, if you are, shh, don't tell anybody yet or share with anybody what it looks like because it is our Advent surprise. If you haven't had a chance to get yours this time round, I'm really sorry, but you can learn lots of things by just watching. And there's always next year where we will be doing something new. I've got all my multi-tools at the ready. This is, of course, part two of the Advent project. And um, I, I, I think I've just got to say it straight out. We have had a slight issue with the quantities of wool. Not everybody will have had issues with the quantities of wool but we found a very naughty scales um, in our workshop and so we accidentally might have shortchanged you by half a gram or even a gram of wool now it might might not affect you but if it does affect you then do get in touch and tell us which wool you have run out of i will just say that the wool is applied very thinly because we want that a uh, nice lovely yellow a background to shine through which in effect is basically the moon shining onto um, the clearing where um, at some point we will have all the animals because it's an animals in the wood themed wall hanging. Um, the Sunday has been the second of Advent so I've, I've lit a second candle here now and um, I hope you I don't know if you follow this tradition with lighting Advent candles but I've always done it in my family ever since I was little and I've carried this on living in this country too and yesterday from yesterday to this morning it was also uh, Nikolaus Day um, which um, I know some people celebrate um, Saint Nicholas quite early on like I think the Dutch have their biggest um, Nick, Saint Santa Day or Saint Nicholas Day or whatever you call it um, right early on in December where, where you get most of your gifts and then Christmas Day is a much more subdued quiet affair with no gift giving um, so we have always done in as we as in us Germans, me as I'm speaking for on behalf of all the German nation is um, Saint Nicholas Day is on the 6th of um, um, is it actually the 6th today? Oh I don't know whatever day it is today um um, we've always done it. No, it must be the seventh. It's from the sixth to the seventh. Um, we have got. Um, we leave. Um, Saint Nicholas comes in the evening, and he leaves uh, presents in the usually in a boot that's left outside the the bedroom doors of the children, and um, it's also chocolates and nuts and fruits, and then there are also the gifts. Just for those of of you who haven't got a clue what I'm talking about, just a little explanation here. Right, let's say hello to who is here today. Uh, we have got in here with us Erica. Erica, you must be celebrating um, quite um, a, a big um, event on um, St. Nicholas Day, I'm pretty certain. Um, Rachel is there and Daniel. Hello both. Uh, Diane is there. Jane is there. Um, from a very a very stormy Cornwall. Well, I'm telling you now, it's a very stormy Gloucestershire and it's probably stormy everywhere by the sound of it with that second storm coming. Elaine is there. Jane is there saying, hi, Steffi, Alicia and Fluff friends. Good to have you back in person, Steffi. Well, I feel like I'm half a person, but at least I'm here. And uh, Jackie is there. Oh, hi, Jackie. That's a rare occasion that you're joining us. Obviously, your daughter isn't hogging the internet, so that's good. Carol is there all the way from uh, potentially are you an island at the moment? I don't know. Maybe you're not. Um, Alison is there. Ashley is there. Hi, everyone. Nice to take a break from Christmas cards. Really enjoying the Advent Project plus the calendar. Oh, nice one. Yeah, I'm trying to keep up with the calendar, but I'm always a little bit behind, obviously, so that I don't spoil it for anybody else. Um, v is there. Hi, V. Um, awkward prawn. Ah, I think that is probably something worse that I best not um, pronounce without um, um, making a fool of myself. Um, Dawn is there. Vampire Venom. Hi, hi there. I hope you're um, better, um, Jane. So, yeah, hope hope you're okay. Diana is there, all the way from the Isle of Mull. Um, hope you've recovered from Glasgow. Well, I'm telling you now, Glasgow was lovely. The people were lovely. We loved it. it we had such a beautiful welcome, and uh, I'd go back any time. It was really beautiful. Karen was there. Uh, Karen is there, um, even still here. 
Yes, what lovely weather for felting. I couldn't agree more. I've got a hot drink. I won't tell you what I'm drinking. Shall I tell you what I'm drinking? I'm actually drinking hot bouillon. I fancied something savoury and so there it is. Doesn't look very pleasant but it's very nice. Mm. Warming, just what I need. Um, Pamela is there. Good morning. Yes, good morning for you. Good afternoon for us. Marion is there. Um, Amanda and Bridget. You must be having nice summer now in um, in Australia, Bridget. Whereas we are um, with us, our socks and pants are being blown off by the storm and the rain makes us definitely wet. Um, Tony Owl is there. Hello. Donna is there. Hi, Donna. Um, Alex. Hi, Alex. I'm going to wave at everybody. Um, Kathleen is there. Uh, Liz. Paulina. And Julie. I met Julie. Hi, Julie. Nice to see you this way as well. Um, and um, I hope that, um, yeah, maybe we've got some new viewers here. Um, remember to give us the thumbs up and also remember to subscribe to our channel. If you haven't done so yet, then you get notifications when anything pops up um, on our live stream schedule. We've got an exciting program um, ahead of us in the new year. I'm really, really excited by it. So keep watching out when we can make everything official. And um, yeah. Let's start with, or let's continue with, um, I don't know with the instructions now, that happened last time. Um, okay, I'm just going to tell you something about um, what's still up for grabs, which is the uh, winter retreat. We've still got spaces at the winter retreat. I'm just going to put that on while I go looking for my um, instructions. So don't go away, I'll be there in a minute. Right, where are you? Instru set of instructions. Oh, I can see them but just out of reach. So I have to walk over there and get them. Um, so the winter retreat is, as we've done it before, um, a lovely time spent in the Golden Valleys. Even though it will be winter time, it will be stunning, no doubt. Um, and uh, you will be designing your own dragon. And um, so basically the dragon that you can see here will probably be nothing like the one that you're making, but it is going to be uh, your own design and it can be fearful or it can be very friendly. And uh, we will treat you to all the materials, all of our favorite tools that are for you to take away. You will definitely walk away with a finished project. We will have some fun activities in, in between. We will enjoy home cooked um, excellent food, really lovely food. And um, of course, we will enjoy each other's company. And um, well, we're surrounded by fluff. What could be better than that? I've got my instructions now as well. Right, so let's have a look at um, at the overview um, camera to see what you're actually making. So today we're filling in the foreground um, with, um, with um, sort of bits here in the lighting. Um, in, um, is that what it's called? clearing and then um, uh, very very sparse details around the base. Now the reason why they need to be sparse is because there's going to be a foreground and this is why I'm, I am telling you everything that you're going to put here on the on the outside here will more or less disappear but we're just putting it down so we've got something extra to felt into. But you, um, you should be having um, variegated green New Zealand merino bats, three grams of that, one gram of dragon mix, one gram of our beige caracal merino, two grams of the country sheep, which is, um, it's a gray brown, but I think we're calling it brown on our website. I think um, Alicia is writing all the right phrases down. One gram of olive green Australian merino, two grams of dark brown, Spanish mer uh, merino tops. Now, I don't think that top is listed just yet. It's a new one. And then we've got um, two grams of forest green New Zealand merino buds. I have told them um, in the office that we can list that wool now, so hopefully it will go up. And hopefully it will be up by Thursday when you're maybe watching this again as a live stream on our Facebook group. So following on from last week, you are going to um, be filling this clearing background and start adding trees into the picture. For the oval clearing, you will need only half of the variegated green. So I'm going to half that now. Yeah. Of the variegated green. Um, dragon mix and beige, car car beige caracal merino. You will need a mottled mix of all three. So we have these, these three colors that we're going to uh, mix. And um, 
basically, as with a lot of the landscape pictures that I'm I am I'm designing and I'm doing, we leave quite a lot to complete random. So let's mix a little bit of wool together. Just do whatever takes your fancy. The dragon mix, by the way, can be all kinds of shades of colors. You could even have quite a lot of um, purple in there. We just need to mix a nice sort of concoction of, of these colors. Sometimes it's nice to have more of the green coming out. Sometimes it's nice to have more of the beige coming out. You can also just mix it so that you have um, um, only two colors together. Um, just have a little play. And what I'm doing is I'm actually laying them out um, already just so that I can gauge the quantities. And we do want the, the lighter colors still to shine through as well. So for this, you can use a single felting needle, um, work with a coarse needle, um, or you can um, use a multi-tool, just get it stuck in there. If you're using a multi-tool, I've got my Clover 3 needle felting tool here. It does speed things up, but not everybody wants things to be sped up. Ah, oh, it's my button that's clicking. I wonder what is that clicking noise? It's the shirt of my button. Um, it's the button of my shirt. <laughs> that is one of the things that I will say when I when I'm tired, I get my words completely muddled up. I even make up new words. Um, so if if you hear me say even more gobbledygook than what I normally do, that's probably the reason why. Yes, we drove back from Glasgow on Sunday night. It took about six hours, and um, we came back um, at about quarter to two in the morning. Uh, and I was at work the very same day and I haven't stopped to be honest I haven't had a day off yet because there's quite a lot that needs to be done um, in preparation for being extra early on a um, for because Christmas obviously is not very far away and um, everybody at the makers will have a deserved break as well not everybody has the whole of um, of the um, Christmas holidays off but some people are taking the adva taking advantage of having a holiday so basically we will have to pack our makers boxes early and our fairy boxes early and get everything into place so that you um, get it all in time at the beginning of January there will be some delays I'm absolutely certain because of of, uh, of the mailing um, system they're not con obviously not collecting any parcels during the bank holidays and the extra bank holidays because Christmas and New Year falls on a weekend so we can make up the holidays um, during um, the, the midweek well not exactly midweek but I think there's a Monday so I, I noticed that I've uh, definitely gone a bit generous with my covering here so I'm, um, I'm have wispier bits down here um, you can take bits off and, um, and just lay them out. I have got the right quantities, by the way. Oh, got double check them. Just don't worry, honestly, don't worry too much if it's really thinly applied. There is a lot of extra stuff going happening over the top and, and it probably partially it's a bit nerve wracking that you don't know what is going over the top because we're trying to keep that as a surprise. But I'm telling you now, I'm counting. I'm counting now how many animals you could have on there. Um, one, two, sorry, I'm looking at them. Let's just go to the big camera for a minute. So, um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen animals and potentially other details. So there is going to be a lot of um, uh, stuff happening in the foreground, and then there's also um, I don't want to give too much away, but we have we're adding some trees now in the background, but there will be two very large trees in the foreground. Um, I'm hoping I'm not spoiling this, but I want to reassure people that um, in terms of the wool, even you might, even though we we uh, we totally own up that we might have shortchanged you for by half a gram or maybe even a gram, we are going to put that right for you. But I promise you, there is an awful lot of um, extra details going to be added where the background is almost wasted if you're filling it entirely. So just add wisps into it, and we do want these lighter patches we do want to see them because it's a massive big moon here and it's making um, that clearing um, really light and um, and and sort of bringing really nice light and shadows into it all at the same time right so I'm gonna um, stay with this now for the um, 
for the clearing. So that's my, my bit here that is um, literally in the middle. And um, the next thing I'm going to do is you will need to make a mix of the grey brown, which is um, what we call our mountain sheep uh, variegated brown, I think, and uh, the olive um, green wool bud. So these two are now going to be mixed uh, for the next um, stage. And um, and um, and they are going to fill in the surrounding area here. This is also where we are going to put um, something on top. So these bits here don't need to be very, very um, densely covered either. It is literally just wasted. I'm, I'm telling you now. It needs to have something underneath, but it is going to be wasted if you are um, filling um, lots of it. Right. I know that we um, we normally have a, a, a lovely... Um, um, question like a competition pressure question going but instead over the next um, few weeks leading up to Christmas still I'm just trying to do the math is it even weeks still it feels like days to Christmas uh, you will be um, you will have a chance to win yourself something if you are um, if you get our advent calendar so don't forget to go onto our every Wanna makers facebook page because there you can um, submit a, a photo of something that you have made from or use the detail the uh, materials from the advent calendar and we are giving away three 25 um, pound gift vouchers every week so this is this is over the next um, few weeks how many days is it to Christmas I can't even think oh it's still definitely two weeks definitely two weeks still that's um, that's a relief because I haven't exactly bought very many Christmas presents as in none because I've been busy away so um, I will um, have to buckle down and get going with this who's bought Christmas presents already tell me have you made something I've made lots of things but I've made them all selfishly for myself uh, I've been um, knitting um neck warmers and scarves while I've been away just sitting in the evening keeping my hands busy as and my 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 mind empty as uh, I always keep saying to you do this with needle felting but I think after a whole day of needle felting I find it hard to do this in the evening for my own pleasure too oh it's okay I got this wrong I've just been corrected it's one 25 pound gift voucher um per week but in the last week it's three so anyway that's that's um all corrected now um hopefully you'll be the lucky recipient of it so tell us what have you done for Christmas yet what preparations have you actually done and what is is are you stressed are you stressed do you need um, to do lots of things still leading up to Christmas have any of your plans completely um toppled into nothingness because of the new restrictions or because of just the circumstances of it all Here's the place to give us a good old moan and we can all make the right noises to um, to pop you up and prop you up um, uh, during it all. For speaking for myself, I can't wait to literally close the doors, close the gate, literally close the gate and just shut down. And I have to be so disciplined not to look at any messages or anything um, that uh, could potentially draw me back into work. Um, I have also got this week, I've got the pleasure of reading the Making um, Needle Felted Fairy Folk book for any errors that might have snuck in there or that need anything that needs changing so that it can be sent off to the printers before Christmas. And fingers crossed, everything crossed, um, I'm hoping that um, we will be able to start listing the book before Christmas so that you can pre-order it. I will let you know next week, I should know um, whether all of that is happening. Right, let's mix some wool. So I've got the two here already. And again, because you're just filling in sort of the scatty foreground, um, just mix bits of, of this wool, lay it out. I always sort of lay it out as if you're almost painting it on, but you know, by just teasing it out and putting it on like that. And then you're felting it down. I know that this part of doing the um, picture is sort of almost like the boring part but as said before I'm hoping that you are all really busy at the moment and you're grateful that you don't have to um, do complicated designs um, on there so I'm that is my hope that that um, and that was the plan always that we get all the background work done before um, well, it, during the busy time of leading up to Christmas and then you can take your time when everything calms down and everything 
um, gets quiet that you can do all the other bits when you have got the time to do it that take a little bit more concentration and a little bit more finesse and a little bit more detail so just get it on you'll be absolutely fine even if it's rough and ready um, it's all it's all good it's all meant it's all been designed exactly for that reason so be sparing be even stingy with the wool I'm telling you now lots of it will go on over the top and then it's just gonna be completely lost so if I can give you a tip, I would make sure that the area that is adjacent to the clearing, this bit here, that you do have plenty um, of wool there to bridge the gap because that is going to be um, sort of a, um, a transition space that will stay visible. And other than that, don't um, don't stress if, if it's really scarce, sparse and scatty. That's the word. Scatty? Is that a word? I don't know. I told you when I'm tired, I invent new words. Scatty. No idea if that's a word. Right. Um, let's get all that felted down. I'm going to check in in a minute who is um, who's, who's doing Christmas menus planned, says Carol. Cards and gifts for family wrapped, written, and sent. Wow. That is amazing. I don't think I've sent a Christmas present for my family in Germany for years now. I just never genuinely have the time. Um, I'm always busy. Bus Christmas is always the busiest time for the business. So I, I tend to <laughs> give the business the space and the time. I feel really bad about that now. Um, so Awkward Prawn says, decorations up, some presents purchased. I make for Christmas, uh, I make for birthdays. So less pressure at Christmas. Just stressed about potential lockdown as whole family should be visiting grandson's first Christmas. Oh, that must be so awful. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, are they coming from abroad? That's what I wonder. Um, because just getting around the UK should be fine, I'm guessing. But um, travels from abroad, I think they're they're possible, but a lot less um, less easy than they have been and um, more costly and potentially um, it could be that then you can't yeah you don't get there in the end so uh, Elaine was saying is saying I was panicking that I wouldn't get it finished but it's gone quicker than I thought it would yes this was the plan Elaine I promise you all this doesn't there is a reason behind all of this I, I haven't just made this up um, whilst I'm talking to you, I promise you, when I was designing this particular um, project, I thought people will not want to make a very complicated and labor intensive um, part of this picture before before Christmas, because I know how everybody is busy. And it's not just, uh, to be honest, it's not just always the time you've got to spend on, on everything um, to do with Christmas. It's also the whole stress that you pick up on. So I didn't want you to feel even more stressed about it, something that you really didn't need to feel stressed about making this um, wall hanging. It's all good. Just chill, get a little bit of your stress um, worked out by stabbing. And I know I'm using this uh, multi-tool. Of course, if you're using a single needle, this will take a little bit longer. But um, still, um, you can use a multi-tool or you just spend a little bit longer than I do felting this down. Remember, there's lots happening over the top. So even if it's not felted down super, super solid, that's fine too. So what you should now see distinctly is that the clearing is slightly lighter with these lovely rusty colors in there. And then you've got the base here, which is um, the brown and the green all mixed together. I've actually got a bit left over, so I could scatter that around, but I'm actually going to hold on to it. It's not necessary. Right. I'm going to just read some more of the comments here. Um, Awkward Prawn says, decorations up, some presents purchased. Oh no, I've just read that. Oh, silly me. Uh, Diane says, oh, looking forward to your book. Me too, me too, I really am. It's been it's been a labor of love, that book. So I am looking forward to it. And I, I'm so excited to hear you all being away with the fairies too. Um, Ashley says, all presents bought and made some too. Now having fun making project projects the project and things from the calendar too lovely um i'm reading i'm reading backwards which is never good okay so let's um diane says uh, wow 14 animals have to guess which ones <laughs> well 
<laughs> yes, have a guess. Uh, uh, no, I can't keep a secret. I'm terrible. Uh, yes, I will take a day off. I, I promise, Diana, I promise. I will take a day off. I'm actually planning on tomorrow morning to have some time off so that I can um, spend some time with my oldest daughter, who I haven't barely seen. Well, I haven't seen any of them, but she's also not at home very often. Um, oh, uh, Elaine says also just finished the red panda as it's a present for my daughter. That's a lovely present. Um, vampire, uh, no, uh, no, that's right. Making this week's make tonight, I think, with today's packet and the sparkly blue. I made, I've made a, made resin pieces for my mum and sister and embroidery for my brother-in-law. Bought my housemates bits, though. Bought my house. Oh, you bought your housemates bits, though. Sorry. <laughs> This could be a very dangerous sentence with a different emphasis on different. <laughs> you could say bought my housemates bits though, or you could say bought my housemates bits though. Very different. Okay, this is um, it's the beauty of language can be completely uh, misread. Um. Oh, we've got this, a new person and. I don't recognize that name, Anne, but um, hello from a wet and windy Cambridgeshire fence. Yes, definitely wet and windy. Um, oh, Bridget says it's only 11 degrees. It's cold and rainy. Oh, no, that's not fun for summer. 11 degrees. Is that 11 degrees Celsius? It must be because if it was Fahrenheit, it'd be even less. Um, Awkward Porn says Benny is hogging my workshop space and listening to Steffi. I have pictures. Oh, please do share. Share the pictures on Everyone and Maker later. It's a shame we can't see pictures here on YouTube that you can share. Maybe one day. Um, Bridget says, I've done decorations for family and friends, donating a few for the CWA stall on Saturday. Not sure I know what CWA stands for, but um, everybody else probably knows. I usually am like this. I never know anything. Uh, yes, remember thumbs up, says Ashley. I've been knitting a Christmas jumper for myself, says Jane. Making 60 Christmas cards. Wow. 10 felted sheep, tomters, plus a felted table, table center please, piece. Still have more to do. That is, that's what I call busy hands. That's amazing. And Vampire Nevin says, I don't really do big Christmas. Went off as a teen when I bought all the stocking fillers for me and my sister and wouldn't bother if not for friends and family. Oh, uh, I, I mean, I do know what you mean. I think when the children are little, it's kind of, it's all about the children, but they're growing up a bit. And now I feel it should be all about me having some time off and um, eating nice foods and food and just chilling. Um, oh, they're, um, Awkward Prawn says they're all coming from England. Hopefully they don't shut the Welsh border. Oh, forgotten about um, that they, they do different things, Wales and um, Scotland. Nah, let's leave the border open. Let's sneak them through. Um. Oh, okay. I'm reading. Oh, I can't read it all out. Um, Bridget says, "Don't buy too much for my family. Just eat together. Only five min five in my family. Easy, no stress." Pretty much the same here as well. We're six in our family. I've been making robins for my table presents, says Alison. They're going to hold a little envelope of sunflower seeds so we can all have a growing competition in the summer. That is a lovely idea. Oh, I love it. Um, I think we all we all need to steal that idea. Mm. Oh, so Jackie says, don't seem to have enough of the fibers, even though spreading it out super thinly. Get in touch, Jackie. There really was, um, we found the culprit um, uh, measuring scales. We've got about five or six in our workshop and we've identified the naughty one and we have um, basically um, retired it. I think that's the word to say. And we have uh, uh, invested in new ones. So I do apologize for that. It wasn't a battery job. It was just, they were just, they just gave up. But we didn't know they gave up. And um, I think when you're working with such small quantities of wool, it's easy to tell you know, one gram from 10 gram, but it's really hard to tell one and a half from two grams. So I really, really, we really very, very apologetic. Please forgive us, everybody. We're putting it right. Get in touch and tell us what you need and we'll post it out to you. Um, so Pamela says, gifts sorted, mostly now busy creating cleverly deceiving gift wrap for them. Ah, okay. In the past, I've disguised gifts as gnomes inside a cardboard jeep and disguised as an actual can of beans. <laughs> I 
haven't even thought of that. I usually just throw the paper on because I know in a minute it's going to be torn off again. That is quite ingenious. I like that. I think I think when um when definitely that's another stage for when they're a lot older. But that's amazing. You have to you have to share some photos, Pamela. I'd love to see that. I really would. Right, let's get on with the next stage. So we're now um, from page two to page three. Oh gosh, I've got a lot. Um, oh, I've got, oh no, I don't have a lot to do. I've actually got the instructions printed twice. I thought that was a lot. Um, so now we're going to take the dark brown wool tops, these ones here, there. And um, to make five tree trunks, which will sit in the background, start from the left with a trunk of about 10 centimeters long and two centimeters wide, unfelted. Allow it to touch the edge of the clearing. So let's just do this roughly. Oh, that's about right. Take a bit off. Oh, you need to see this, don't you? Right, I'm going to go on the overhead um, seam. Right, so that one is the first one. I think that's about 10 centimeters. Can you see that? It's just there. And um, and then you're going to um, lay another trunk on the other side. Both remain unfelted for now. So we're going to put one there and then we put one on the other side. There. So these are now touching, touching the clearing. And then you're going to make a third one in the middle. There. Let's shorten that a bit there. And then you're going to um, finally make two slightly smaller and shorter trunks to fill the gaps. So I've definitely got plenty of this brown wool and they're slightly higher as well. There you go. Like that. So one, they're basically just touching. Oh yes, sorry, you can't see. There. Right, I can see it. You can't see it. Now you can also see it. And then you're going to felt this on. Felt that on. And then felt the middle, the next one on. And then felt that one on. And the next one. This is now starting to actually put, even though it's background trees, you're actually putting things on top of um, what you've obviously prepared. So this is the beginning of it. And that will also demonstrate to you that a lot of the background will actually be covered up. So it's, um, it's all good. It will all work out all right, I promise you. Oh, I should also mention, let's get all the unpleasant trees out of the way that we have um, discovered that, um, or maybe have I already mentioned this, I seem to have been talking to so many people about this today. The, um, the There is one wall in your last step, which is the mountain sheep beige, but accidentally we've added the mountain sheep natural brown. So you will be getting new wool anyway, Any all of you will. Right, so that's now felted on. And I don't know if you can see this, but these lighter parts here now, they look as if the moon is shining directly through the trees onto, onto it. And that is that is the purpose of it all. That's exactly why we've done this. So once you've got the trees on, um, what I've done is, I don't know if you noticed, I've sort of spread out the, um, the areas here a little bit. Um, but you can add more of that brown wool to um, emphasize that there's there are obviously sort of roots and the tree trunk is sitting right here on top of those of the base of that tree that's spreading out so you can take a little bit more of that brown and spread it out to make the roots more obvious and the the, the base of the tree more obvious Trees are quite fat at the moment, so I'm going to felt them a little bit more narrow. They're meant to be pine trees. So making them more narrow, I just stab into the side. Same here. More of 
Yes. The tree trunk here at the base, making that more of a feature, felting this down. When you felt down on one area, you might just have to sort of flatten the rest out again. And of course, I am felting on our Earth Friendly Felting Mat. I hope all of you who have had the Advent um, calendar enjoy getting that little um, baby mini Earth Mat. I have genuinely, I have felt it so much with this. So the next thing is you're going to take the variegated green you put to one side at the start and the forest green wool and mix into an even new colour. You will need to make five separate separate batches for each tree. Let's do this here. So I'm going to probably going to actually I'll tell you what I'm doing is I'm going to make five batches already out of each wool. This is just an idea what you could be following. So you've got five equal batches, roughly the same. And then you're going to add your variegated green on top. There. So I've got five batches here and now I'm going to mix each five of them. They don't need to be mixed um, very, very um, thoroughly. Just get them mixed up. One. Two. Three. Is anybody doing any Santa secret Santas? Is anybody having secret Santa um, projects? Secret Santa is a completely was a completely alien um, concept for me. When um, I don't think they do secret Santas in Germany, I didn't. I couldn't understand what the, what the heck secret Santas was, and I found it really hard to keep a secret Santa. As Alicia said, I'm not good at keeping surprises or secrets, so. Um, I um I found I found it excruciating the secret Santa at first. I'm getting better at, at it now, but I was like dying to tell everybody and find out who um who secret Santa who did what. Um. So anyway, I've got five. This is what they look like. My mixed little uh, balls of wool. Five portions here, and I'm gonna pull this right down so you can see it in the in the screen next. Um, so what you're going to do next is uh, start with the trees further away, the ones that are not reaching into the clearing. Take wisps of the mixed green wool, wools and lay out in a slightly curved strand starting at one side of the tree. Work your way upwards creating a herringbone pattern. Let's um, let's show you this um, so you can see this. So I've actually these are touching the clearing so I've been a bit a bit naughty and pulled them further forward but um, you can have them um, further back if you want to. And you're starting with, um, so basically, this one and this one should not be touching the clearing, but mine do. But that's just how I've done it. And then you're laying out the wool, starting at the bottom, going in a herringbone pattern. A herringbone pattern, does everybody know that? So it's like laying the wool out, always touching in the middle, but laying over the, over the top. And then what you do is you... Use either your multi-tool, depending um, what you want, what you prefer, but you felt it down in the middle. So now you know this is sort of caught, if you like, and then you felt towards the um, the edge. So we can often we can make shapes already looking in the way that we want them to look by just felting them down in that way. What on earth have I picked up here? That seems a very fine needle. Let's try a slightly coarser one. It's also fine. Some of those needles aren't marked. Right, let's try this one. Oh, that's definitely a coarse needle. It's a bit more grippy. So that is how you are felting every single tree, basically. And so you can see that sort of pattern following through. And then um, you do this on... Um, what whichever trees are in the background, which is confusing me now because I haven't made this go in the background, but um, it is further in the background than this one, so I suppose I'll just follow follow it through, um, laying the wool out in this herring herringbone pattern on this one as well. You can make the trees a lot um, like make the trunks taller and have just the top part covered. That's possible too. 
and it will obviously start reaching into the moon as well. Um, if if you don't want that to happen, then you have to make them slightly shorter and then felt it down in the middle again. And then follow that line to spread out the branches to the left and to the right. And then you have to do that three more times. So because you've now got three tree trunks here that are going to be in the foreground, they, they will obviously, there will be an overlap happening and that's okay. And this is, this is sort of the main part of what I've tried to say, don't worry too much if the background is sparse, because a lot of it will be lost anyway by putting things into the foreground. So um, it, you definitely don't want to be short of wool in the foreground, but if you're short of wool in the background or if over overspent a bit, if you like, then that's fine. Um, so don't worry too much about this. And then once you've put that on, you're going to felt it in exactly the same way as you've done um, the other two. So um, just bear with me a second. I just have to um, let my daughter know that I'm actually on a live stream because she's very loud. Um, I'm on a live stream. Be quiet. Okay, hopefully she'll get that. Right, let's felt this down in the center and then towards the edge. Like that. And then I've got to repeat it one more time on the final tree. And it's absolutely fine in uh, if you imagine you're in the forest, um, sorry, too much. I've done, yes, that's right, two more trees. When you're in a forest, you, you see sort of the trees in the foreground complete, but you also know that there are trees in the background and you might just see parts of it. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So don't worry about it, um, it overlapping the other trees. That's exactly what's meant to happen. So that um, you, you basically, you can't identify every single tree when you walk into the woods, but you can see that they're obviously all there and not all of them are completely visible as a whole. Put that down as well. And then that's the last one, which is a little bit taller. I've still got, um, I haven't used very much wool on one of the trees, so I've got ex extra now. I can make that a bit taller anyway. Christmas trees, wool, fir trees. Who is having um, real Christmas trees in the house? Let's ask that question while, whilst we're working on trees. Um, so what we have done is we always buy a potted tree and then that lasts us for, I don't know how many years until it grows too big. We have had a few casualties. It's really hard to actually believe um, people when they say it's been uh, grown all its entire life in a pot. Sometimes they, they're actually not telling the truth. It depends where you buy it. If it's from a reputable nursery, they, they should be telling you the truth. But um, we've had trees where it's so obvious that they haven't been grown in a pot because they just basically, they stay um, alive for a few weeks and then they, they die, unfortunately. But um, normally you should have um, a, a, a potted tree. Should we, 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 we obviously repot them as they, as they grow, but we have had uh, potted trees for years. And then finally, when they got too big, we planted them out in the garden and um, they're still there actually. Right, here we go. So that's my trees now um, put on there. Now I have gone slightly off um, as I often do is. So there are some trees that are meant to be more um, uh, further back um, and there are some trees that are not. Now I've still got some of this brown left and I feel like my my um, trunk of that tree has got lost a little bit. So I'm going to felt that down again. So you can make those readjustments as well, even though it doesn't say it in the instructions. T use your common sense and look at your picture and, um, and just do what you think feels right. If you follow the instructions, you will get to um, the picture of that, I'm absolutely certain. But if you want to, if you see things that have sort of slightly gone different from what I've been doing, because either you haven't read the instructions um, word for word or you just done it differently, then that's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's your picture. They will all be slightly different. 
as I always say with all these things. So I've got a row of trees here now framing the back of the um, of the clearing and all these white bits that are shining through, that's obviously the moonlight that's um, catching, um, going through the trees and, um, and lighting up the background. There we go, that's how far I've got now. So we've got the trees in the background now, um, all ready waiting to see what's going to happen in the foreground. And that's how far um, we are going for this particular step. Just double checking that we're right. Yes, that's right. All the way to the last picture. Um, so you start, you've, I've started working on the trees in the foreground. And then you color in all the trees in the same way. Now, we have still got... Um, a few days, you've still got a few days time until the 10th of December, all day on the 10th of December, to get your cat bauble kit from the Cats Protection. If you have bought a cat bauble kit before, so I've got fluff up my nose now, then you can get 10% off by uh, using the, the code CRAFT10, all capital letters and then the letter 10, no, number 10, um, and put that into the uh, discount code box on the checkout at the Craft Protection website. And I will just show you, um, just so that you can see it. I haven't adjusted, oh no, I've taken it off. Craft Protection, I have, however, got the cats hanging up here so you can see the cat baubles they've been hugely popular we've loved seeing every single uh, photo that you shared partially on um, everyone makeup but also on the craft for cats group which uh, you are allowed to join if you have bought a cat bauble kit so um, hop onto their website it's the it's the um, www.catsprotection.com forward slash craft for cats and I think craft for cats is spelled with like the the four is spelled with proper for and um, or if you just google it um, cats protection craft for cats it will take you to the right uh, site and there you can buy your craft kit at 10 percent off they're normally 20 pounds so they will be 18 pounds and um and you do need to use the code craft 10 so c-r-a-f-t 10 number 10 and uh, put that in the discount code uh, box for for you for it to work but i i do believe it only works if you have bought one bauble kit before so um, if you're planning to buy two, buy one first and then use the Craft 10 um, discount code um, to get extra money off. But in any case, if you don't get the money off, it will go to, to the, um, the extra money stays with a with a, a cat's protection and they do amazing things. Um, for all of those who are ready to join me this week for the Dogs Trust and, um, um, and if you haven't got your... Um, kit yet because there were all kinds of problems and I promise you they had absolutely nothing to do with us um, and don't worry because from what I understand and I've double checked this today the actual uh, event is going to be on a public page you can watch it anytime you can even watch it when if you haven't got a um, a kit that's my understanding um, if it if it's any different I will let you all know um, but you can watch it and um, at any time after as well so please don't uh, get stressy over it the main thing is and remember that everybody who bought their kit will get it that's absolutely guaranteed and everybody who has um, spent the money on it it will go to good courses I I see the Docs Trust, um, I follow the Docs Trust on Instagram and on Facebook, and it is absolutely heart-wrenching what people do um, at the cost of dogs. And I am absolutely, um, totally grateful that there is such an organization as the Docs Trust, who, they might not be very slick technically um, on their IT department, but they do know what they're, not, what they're doing with dogs, and that's what matters. So just um, just cut them some slack and I'm, um, yeah, I promise you we do all we can to get these kits out to you as soon as we have actually got the data and that's been the problem. So um, ah, let's have another little look what's going on. Oh, Bridget says four years ago a truck hit a pine, pine tree so I cut a bit big branch and used that for our tree. Oh, I see, but only for, for, for one year, I'm assuming. Um, Diane says it's look, looking really great now, brilliant. Um, Jane says two real tree, trees, one indoors and one outdoors. Nice. Uh, Vampire Venom says we have a six foot fake. I prefer real, but my housemate has dyspraxia, which makes him freak out every morning um, at the best of times. So it's very different right now with prices going up. 
Oh, bless you. I know. I, I mean, some of those uh, fake trees, they're they so amazingly real. It's unbelievable. Um, the trees look amazing, says Elaine. Rose says, that looks amazing. Thank you, Rose. Diane says, doesn't matter what tree we have, we always get a cat in it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, you do, you go, you do have to uh, love cats for it. Um, we will be collecting the real tree on Friday. Nice one, Elaine. Um, Ashley says at least you can tell mine are trees. I'm happy with that. Excellent. Um, sorry, I'm reading backwards. So this is this is never good reading backwards, but I am. Um, cool way. Of making trees thanks yes I agree says uh, Diane uh, 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 Diane actually agrees to Bridget and Bridget says gotta admit the brush I'd really is great oh yes it's really good for cleaning okay let's do let's do a cleaning of the brush mat um sorry a uh, cleaning of the with the brush of the mat <sighs> okay here we go right there's all this fluff on there so if you haven't got one of these yet it is definitely worth an investment not only do you get a cleaner mat? You might also just rescue a few um, bits of wool that um, we've shortchanged you. <laughs> and you can use it to cover your picture. How about that? It never becomes completely clean again, but um, it does get quite clean. Oh, we've, by the way, on our way um, to Scotland, we actually called in um, at the um, manufacturing site where these earth mats are being made. And um, it is an amazing um, company that needs um, our support. UK made an old established company and we absolutely love it that they, um, that they make these mats for us exclusively. Here we go. Right, look, look at all this extra fluff. You can make another picture with it. So if you need if you need extra fluff, get rid of your uh, fluff on the earth mat and just add a bit more into your picture, melt it down, um, perfectly recycled wool, and it fills a few gaps. If you feel you need to fill these gaps, as I said, there'll be a lot of stuff happening in the foreground and a lot of the background will completely disappear. So don't um, spend too much time making it look all very, very beautiful. But look at this, added a bit more into it, all reused and even added a another shade of wool in there. Right, got to be something good about this. So um, we've also got still spaces on uh, Sophie Wheatley's um, pet portrait and wild animal picture. They're all 2D and they are non-residential happening at our um, in, in Nailsworth, which is the place where we are based. You can uh, book a place or you can find out more by emailing us or giving us a call. Um, the details are in front of you right now. And um, it uh, the price includes the tuition, materials, tools, refreshments and lunches. So um, the other thing is that um, we are still um, obviously working with a butterfly conservation and uh, their red their the red admiral butterfly workshop is taking place on the 20th of um, january so this is something definitely to to blow your um winter blues away 20 pounds as always 10 pounds stays with the butterfly conservation 10 pounds gets you the kit uh, including postage uk postage large letter and uh, you can get your kit and book your place at um, uh, www.butterfly-conservation.org forward slash red hyphen admiral hyphen craft hyphen club okay if you remember that you're a genius but anyway it's just here in front of you you can pause it and write it down and pop it into your browser and um, hopefully get your kit ordered um, incidentally they're still selling the large blue uh, workshop pack as well if you've missed that one then just get your kit and um, and you can make two beautiful butterflies um, and that's all from me today oh I am so good I have got four minutes spare before the hour is up so let's um let's just give another big shout out to everybody who's been watching thank you so much I, I'm gonna say this every week now leading up uh, to the end of the year thank you very 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 much for supporting us during 2021 it's been a tough old year um, a lot of it I can maybe reveal at another time but today I just want to smile and be happy and be back in in at home with my family in a 
in a warm and dry place, let's say that, and let's hope that everybody who hasn't got there yet, um, because you're either still working out there or worse still, you're without electricity, which seems an absolute nightmare. Um, and I, it, I've, I've been thinking about this. You obviously won't be watching because you haven't got electricity. But if you watch this any time in the, in the near future and you've been one of the ones affected, trust me, I have thought about this and thought how terrible it must be because it's not just the light switch light on and off it's all kinds of other things that we rely on I for one have no idea what we would all do without internet uh, that would be an absolute disaster lots of people can't use their toilet facilities because they're relying on electricity to get the water to the toilet or if you have a macerator it's just unbearable to think um, and then of course there's all the people who are um who have disabilities and they um, they obviously need the electricity sometimes even just to charge up maybe uh, some devices that they need to live to survive um, we have got news on the teddy bears for the liver um, the British Liver Trust that is all happening um, as we speak I, I think they're hoping to make that link live in the second week of um, so next week um, so that you can buy it even before Christmas still. It might not um, reach you as a Christmas present, but you can certainly join us all on the 3rd of February at 6.30 to make um, a teddy bear. And I promise you next week I will show you the teddy bear and I have a, um, um, a thumbnail ready for you as well so you can see it on screen. And you will, we will tell you as soon as the link is live where to go and buy your teddy bear kit to... Um, support another amazing charity aren't we all good i'm so pleased we can do this right that's all from me today um thank you everybody for joining in today we've had a really good number of people i'm waiting um to see the numbers going over 60 maybe one day we have 100 i'll keep my fingers crossed it would be lovely to have lots of you joining live remember this is repeated on thursday at 7 p.m so you can see it all over again and have a different chat happening uh, thank you Alicia for supporting the makers in um, in their live streams and um, just being a makers groupie really as so many of you are so we, we really really are grateful don't for one minute think we take it for granted take care everybody and enjoy the rest of the week stay warm and dry and um, stay out of that horrible wind bye